guys, it's me Val Toxic Free. Welcome. So let's just talk about something today that I've kind of experienced and um, maybe some of you have experienced. And the thing is, I think when you find somebody that's talking about an experience that you've had, it kind of validates you. And also hopefully you can learn from it so that when this happens to you in the future, you can go, ah, now that's that's a manipulation tool. So I'm going to have to work, work on that because it doesn't affect you in a certain way. It doesn't affect your emotions as much if you actually know what they're doing. So this is why I think watching a lot of videos is really important because we need to know what the manipulation tools are that these... I haven't got a right word I can say on the video. I might lose my monetization, but um, we know that they use photographs and we know photographs are one of the biggest manipulation tools in the narcissist's toolbox. Um, I've had some experience with photographs and I know this video isn't a Granon video, isn't in depth, isn't the DSM-5, you know, but I just think sometimes the smallest of things in a relationship with a narcissist can have the biggest impact on our psyche on our emotions the tiniest thing and anybody watching this has been through a narcissist relationship or any kind of emotional abusive relationship will know sometimes it's the smallest things that can kick us off which is why we get called crazy because they do all the other stuff to make us a certain way so that the tiniest things will kick us off and it's like look at you look at you you crazy you know look at you so I just want to talk about one of them today and it's the photograph. Now I remember dating my ex now. I used to call him Stumpy. Try not to call him Stumpy anymore. <laughs> so she just called him Stumpy. Well he, I remember one day we went out to a shopping mall and I remember looking at his phone, we're having a coffee, I looked down at his phone and I think it was a picture, I don't know if there's a picture of his dog, could have been his dog or it could have just been a flower, it could have been anything. But the last time I looked at his phone, it was a photograph of me and him. Now we know that we like to have the photographs of our lovers, our boyfriends, husbands, on the front of our phones, our families. You know, in the olden days, the uh, people um, in, in the black and white era, you know, 1940s, you know, they used to have little wallets and they'd have their little picture of their sweetheart in their wallet. And that's how you knew you were kind of loved by this person because they had that photograph. If they went to war, they'd sit in the trenches and they'd look at the photograph of their sweetheart. Mobile phones with photographs on the front are very similar to that. That's what we do nowadays. Our sweetheart photographs are not kept in our wallets anymore. They're kept on the front of our phones. So it means a big deal to us. It means a big deal to the people that are dating somebody who's in control of our emotions or we're dating somebody that we don't really know what they feel about us because they're giving us mixed signals all the time. So these little things like the photograph on the front of your phone is a big, big deal. And I always used to have me and my boyfriend on the front of my phone. Anyway, cut a long story short, I saw his photograph had changed. So I said to him, why has your photograph changed? Oh no, I just decided to put, you know, a photograph of the dog on killed me inside because I thought I know you love your dog but I would have hoped that I would have come before your dog and the fact that he'd taken my photograph off the front of his phone and put his dog on or a picture of whatever it was it seemed to hit my chest like a brick now most people when you're in relationships where you're you're what's the word confident in their love you know that they love you. You know that they don't have to prove their love to you or you don't have to look for breadcrumbs because, you know, you believe in each other. But when you're in a relationship with a narcissist, you are looking, forever looking for little breadcrumbs. And that, and if anybody watching this now will know the pain of having your photograph taken off the front of their phone and replaced with something else. There's many reasons why they do this. One is to gain supply. Because just knowing that they've taken that photograph off is going to affect us in a negative way. It's kind of... Um, so what they do is they get supply from that. Because we're sitting there thinking, oh my God, you know. And what it is, is a reaction. They just want any kind of reaction from you. It's, it's, it, it feeds them. It makes them feel wanted. You know, it's like anything. If, 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 if we're with a boyfriend who gets jealous, it gives us the confirmation that if they're jealous of us 
or if they're missing us or whatever it is then we know we're liked we know that we're missed we know we're loved and that's but when, when someone creates that when someone does things on purpose to create jealousy to create that us to miss them and that's what narcissists do they create these reactions in us they'll do something to make us miss them and tell them i've missed you oh sorry sweetie you know sorry i've been missing for a whole week i didn't mean to but they get the validation then the fact that they're loved and they're missed they'll go out with another girl or they'll put a photograph of a girl, of a girl to make us jealous because they know once we're jealous that we love them but they do things to create these things and photos is one of the ways they do it now that was then he did change the photograph back after he put me through the pain and the torture of thinking why have you put your dog on a photograph of, you know on, on a phone and taking me off and it's embarrassing shameful to be upset about that as well it's embarrassing to have to ask your boyfriend can you put the picture back on because i'm so needy and i'm so pathetic and codependent and i'm so you know want to feel loved and need your love that you need to put a photograph of me that's that's what it is it's also kind of a test to see how how low that we've got it's a test to see how vulnerable we are and that's a kind of way to find out that we are losing it that we are kind of succumbing to their manipulations and we are turning into this feeble being that we need breadcrumbs and that's what makes them feel good now the other time I actually had a situation with a photograph was um, I got married to another narcissistic personality idiot and um, I remember when we got married I put our wedding picture up on our profile page and he didn't for a long time <laughs> and I was like saying you know mate why don't you put a picture of us up <sighs> do you know what he put up in the end someone must have taken or him or his family or somebody took a photograph of a group of people and there was me in the group of people looking kind of from the back <laughs> not the most attractive side and he put that up and I was like okay so what the hell have you just put up that was it's like you wanted a wedding picture that's what and he put a picture up of the side of my head in a crowd of people looking the grossest he must have chosen the worst photograph he possibly could of me on my wedding day and put it as a profile picture that kicked me off i was like it does something to you guys doesn't it it just does something to you that your husband after two or three weeks of marriage he left me for another woman had a baby after four months so you can imagine for them to do that it's demeaning another one and this is what they do the photograph he <laughs> so you see you can laugh now can't you no, at the time he wanted to ring their friggin' necks. So, <laughs> I, I don't know what he did one day, but he changed his profile picture on Facebook, as you do. And there was a picture of him sitting at a, a restaurant with a bottle of, maybe it was Corona, I don't know, in front of him. God, I wish. Anyway, and there's the person that's taken the photograph has got a glass of wine in front of them. And I'm looking at this picture, I'm going, where do you get that shirt? And he's watching me. I said, I've never seen that shirt. Where's the shirt come from? And who are you sitting with? Because I don't drink wine. <laughs> I said, that's not me. He's taking the photograph. There's a glass of wine in front of the photographer. Who is the woman drinking wine? He said, it was you. I said, I don't drink wine. And I've never seen you in that shirt. He'd been out on a date with another woman whilst we were married. And he used that profile picture. Now, I don't know whether it was an accident or whether it was a choice. We will never know. I'm trying to find out. It's just intolerable but i challenged him and i'm like who the hell is taking that picture where were you having dinner and i said for crying out loud that is not a shirt i've ever bought you he said you did buy me it and it was like i said where did the photo come from because it was in amongst the, the our holiday photos so that just shows from one holiday to the next you know how you leave your photographs back then in the day you used to have your photographs on your camera and he's put that one up and he said it was amongst our holiday photographs so he must have just had this lovely meal out in between holidays and i was like how can you do that to me you've put up a photograph that another woman has taken of you 
having a dinner out <laughs> so these are the sort of things they do they they use photographs to manipulate and to wind you up um there's also the prop photograph now i might have mentioned this in another video is where i remember we were talking and we were sitting sharing experiences and sharing photographs with each other and swiping going oh this is when i was in canada da, da, da. there's a photograph of him sitting on a bench overlooking the canadian mountains and the person taking the photograph has taken it from behind and he looks at the photo and he shows me the photograph he goes that was me in canada and he said um, my wife was taking that photograph of me from behind but guess who i was thinking about <laughs> i'm like don't know i was thinking about you the moment she took that photograph i was thinking about you whilst i stared across at the mountains wondering where you were in my life i'm like honestly you know and this is just a normal bloody photograph that he picks up and he looks shows me and he pretended and he made a narrative around the photograph so guys just be careful of that if somebody starts looking at photographs and saying oh you know apparently as well he thought of me on his wedding day oh yes that was just solidify his love for me it wasn't that lovely these people will use photographs to manipulate they use many types of manipulation but the photograph is one of the biggest the photograph when you've split up they'll put a photograph of their um, new girlfriend all smiles that's the first thing they'll do when they get their new girlfriend new supply new whatever the first thing they'll do is the lovely photograph kissing each other holding hands in the beach in the park to wind you up um, you need to look out for these because they are done purposely to manipulate you into getting angry and giving them what they want which is jealousy if they know that you're jealous that confirms that you're that confirms your love for them but it's a negative way of bringing out someone's love because they don't and they, they don't feel that they are loved so they create situations they're so shamed they're so disgusted in who they are they need to be validated so they create scenarios to be validated that they are loved, they are, you know, cared about. But the validations they gain are putting us in a situation of pain for them to get their supply. And, you know, if you see your boyfriend, your husband, somebody um, taking their photograph off and putting another photograph on, that's a sign that they need some supply from you. So if you see that you've been replaced by a beach photograph or the builder down the road or the dog or someone else's dog, hold your breath, count to 10 and don't say anything. Just maybe say something like, oh, that's a nice photograph or change your own. Change your own. Guys, I'm serious. It's a ploy to get our emotions to explode. When we're so devalued, we will explode. You need to calm, keep, keep, keep calm because it's, it's, it's a manipulation. It's not real, right? Everything the narcissist does is for their own gain. Change your own photograph. Put a picture of a sunset. Change it to the cat. Change it to the dog. Just do it. So that you're just not playing manipulation games back. I mean, I don't like to do that. But if you can just stay calm and just think, right, I know what he's doing. He's trying to wind me up. He's trying to upset me to get some supply from me. I'm not going to jump. I'm literally going to go and change my phone to a picture of a dog. And don't say another word. Now, remember the Chris Watts thing. Remember when he went on that holiday to the dunes with... Nicole Kessinger, Kissinger, whatever she was called. Remember when he got back, he changed his profile picture to a picture of dunes. And Shanann was like, why have you changed your picture to the, you know, you've taken the family off, but you've put a picture of dunes on. That was his way of gaining supply. That was his way of remembering the time he had with Nicole. He maybe couldn't put a photograph of Nicole on his phone. But just having a picture of the dunes where they spent the night in the tent, where they made love in the bloody sunset or whatever, I don't know. Uh, oh, creepy. 
you know having a photograph is a remembrance it's like when you get these murderers that take necklaces and bras and keep souvenirs it's to gain that supply it's to remember that moment and get off on it it's to wind their partners up to make them give them supply by getting jealous and asking why have you changed the photograph to sand dunes he knows in his head why he's done it and every time he looks at the sand dunes he thinks of nicole kessinger so there's so much power in photographs there's so much power in photography nowadays and the photographs are such a huge way of manipulating us so guys i'm telling you this story because i want you to understand and don't if you know this you might want to react when you see your husband or your boyfriend changing the photograph to the picture of a chicken for god's sake i don't know know in your brain that it's a ploy know in your brain that it's just to wind you up and to get supply and please try not to fall for it point it out and see a nice chicken <laughs> i don't know but just don't fall for it i know it's a silly little thing and i know people who aren't or who've never been abused by narcissists are probably watching this going you're joking me she's made a video about photographs but you and me we both know how hard it is and how hurtful and how much anguish it causes when we see our partner with a different photograph on his phone it's confirmation of his lack of love and that kicks us in the head and kicks us in the heart and it hurts so I just want to share that little thing with you guys because I know that you're watching is thinking oh my god I know where she's coming from we can laugh now but at the time it's not good guys I hope that's helped a little bit and for you to realize next time you see a photograph of a tree on your mum's phone just say mm, nice tree <laughs> stay safe love you all bye